Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What the new year brings to you will depend a great deal on what you bring to the new year. Thank you very much. Would the clerk then please call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Ackley? Alderperson Ackley? We see you. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you very much. Next, uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our 18th regular council meeting held on December 21st. Alderperson Sorensen. Thanks, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Is there a second? second? Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The next item is public forum. City Clerk? There's no one this evening. Very good. Then we'll move on to uh, a resignation. Uh, turn it over, uh, City Attorney Adams. We have one resignation. That is Laura Gunn from the Sheboygan Activity Center Commission, effective immediately. Alderperson Sorensen? I move to accept the resignation. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of accepting the resignation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And just to let you know, Laura Gum is continuing on the Friends organization, but she had moved out of the city. Uh, next item is confirmation of mayoral appointments. Again, City Attorney Adams. Uh, 1.6 is a submission by the mayor for your consideration of Andrew Jacobs to be considered for appointment to the Senior Activity Center Commission to fill a vacancy with the term expiring on April 17, 2023. Alderperson Sorensen? I move to accept or move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. I'd ask the city clerk to please call the roll for passage. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Congratulations, Andrew. Thanks for coming tonight. Next item is confirmation of mayoral appointments. Alder, uh, City Attorney Adams. Uh, this is uh, 1.7. Uh, the mayor uh, hereby submits the following appointments for your consideration to the Harbor Center Business Improvement District Board. Amy Horst, uh, Eileen Simmons, Jordan Saunders, Jane Davis Wood, Paul Rudnick, and Chad Palaszczuk, all for appointments that would expire on December 31st, 2022. Thank you very much. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, confirm the appointments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, turn it over to the city clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Feldy? Do we see her? Okay, I'm going to mark her not present to vote. Nine eyes. I think she's having audio issues. Okay. 
So nine and I is in Barb couldn't vote. Motion passes, and uh, those uh, appointments to the Harbor Center Business District Board are approved. Next item is a presentation by uh, Amy Wilson, the president of Visit Sheboygan Tourism, with an update of their operations at this time. I think believe Amy's uh, joining us remotely. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Amy. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, I believe that Chad forwarded, there it is, a slide presentation that I'll walk you through to give you an update on um, what will be happening in 2021, but we'll look at what's been going on in 2021. Um, uh, next slide, please. So as most of you know, um, the, the big building on 8th Street, the new visitor center has opened. Um, we did a very soft opening. There was no grand opening per se because of COVID. It was just easier to take a precaution. We opened at the end of October, which was six months later than originally planned. Um, some of that was a little bit of delay in construction, but most of it was delay in COVID and our ability to get the center set up, especially the interior. Um, so the new center um, includes the Visit Sheboygan offices, the tourist information, um, a viewing area where we play promotion videos. A lot of those are also online with our bloggers. Um, we were going to be doing a shipwreck installation, um, but we were able to do some models instead. We also have opened a gift and souvenir shop um, the visitor center features on-site parking. Hopefully in the future, it will feature a bike share program and also be a trolley stop to downtown. Um, right now, the visitor center is pretty much seeing locals more than tourists. And that's obviously to be expected for the time of year and the traveling situation. Next slide, please. So just to give you an idea on the gift shop, um, obviously Sheboygan branded and Lakeshore branded merchandise in there uh, without any really type of advertising at all or push on a grand opening. It's been doing pretty well. People have been finding it. Um, the local shopping, local Saturday shopping um, after Black Friday, we did about $1,200 in sales, which is a lot for $20 t-shirts. <laughs> so we were very happy about that. But it's been averaging about $200 a day. We're hoping it grows as a revenue center and pays for itself in the end, that's the goal. Next slide, please. Also some of the, um, through COVID especially, um, we pretty much last winter shut down the marketing and we were able to take some of those contractual obligations and push them out for later, especially <coughs> since the hotels were on lockdown as well. Um, so we had to find a way to come back out of that into the spring and not understanding the situation or trying to be incredibly careful with revenue and how we're spending um, income. We basically <coughs> did an online split. We have two bloggers on staff, Rachel Stankovich and Sam Kiesow. They form um, two online Facebook blogs and blogs on YouTube called Rachel's Route and Scenic Sam. Those are also tied into the Visit Sheboygan, all the social media for social space, Instagram, Twitter, and basically what they do is go around and highlight Sheboygan adventures. They blog about them, they take video of them, they do pictures, they interview people. Um, and we've really, really been pushing that. It's an incredibly cost-effective way to reach a lot of people, especially when they're at home, board online. Next slide, please. One of the other things we've been doing with the marketing going into 2020, which kind of stalled, but we're picking it back up in th this winter, um, is uh, basically getting away from some of the traditional marketing where we get lost or people just don't pay attention to and doing some different type of niche marketing. One of those things is we worked with a local trucking company <coughs> in Campbellsport. Um, they send 40 trucks out every day all over the Midwest and the South and towards the East. And so we're reaching a lot more people through many more states rather than stationary billboards. So we're wrapping these trucks. One of the, the other items we wanted to, to try to negotiate on, on some of the major interstates with wrapping silos, with our budget constraints through COVID, that is in the future. We don't even have that planned yet for 2021. Um, we just need to see how things go there. 
Next slide, please. One of the other things that we do is stay pretty much out of the typical travel magazines where we can't compete. We get lost in the noise of competing against Milwaukee and Green Bay and the Dell, and we go into niche magazines. So this is just a couple examples of ads that have been in foodie magazines. We also do some art magazines. We do a lot of outdoor magazines that focus on surf and stand up paddle boarding and kayaking and outdoor on the water activities. And then the lower banning of the Malibu of the Midwest, that's part of a campaign we run on a website called State Trunk Tours. We look at a lot of other travel websites that a lot of our competitors aren't on and buy ads on those. Next slide, please. One of the um, projects that we started when we planned the visitor center was called Visit Sheboygan STEAM, and STEAM standing for science, technology, um, engineering, <coughs> arts, and mathematics. One of the things we found out through research is that, and through COVID has actually blown up a little bit, is that um, outdoor experiences and environmental and ecological experiences of areas are becoming a real trend especially with uh, the next generation. So what it means is people are, are interested in not just, not just doing the tourist trap typical things. They want to be immersed in your town and in your culture, learn about your environment, your ecology, and especially being on the world's, uh, uh, one fifth of the world's fresh water, bodies of fresh water. Um, we are actually working with um, different uh, partners, including the uh, Maritime Museum, um, the Port Expl Explorium with NOAA in the future on the Na National Marine Sanctuary on some of the um, freshwater ecology and environmental um, aspects of the area. So the new center will include on the top left, you'll see what we call science in the sky. And it's a platform that um, is built out over the water. It's operating completely off the grid, demonstrating hydropo hydroponics, aquaponics, um, plant, and plant life of the area, and how that affects the water, water runoff. Um, and then in the future, we have planned around that area, uh, on the grounds of the visitor center, um, eco and environmental gardens that are indigenous to the lakeshore. Um, and also inside the visitor center, there is a classroom that we're working on put, putting the infrastructure build out in there now. Um, and that classroom will host programs for tourists. They can sign up for, they can sign up for labs. They can do eco tours. All of that is kind of on hold right now, but we'll be hopefully getting that up and running again in the future. One of the items that is in the visitor, visitor center currently and is up and running is the uh, science on a sphere. And that's a six foot suspended globe, um, giant six foot ball that basically can become a globe but it runs live time programs on it um, through an online system with NOAA that can feed us like live time earthquakes around the world, live time volcanoes, weather patterns, how many flights are in the sky. We can see how many people are in line on the planet at one time. It turns into the moon, the sun, every planet in the solar system and the Death Star. <laughs> so we're hoping to basically be running some steam programs through there in the future as well. All of those programs are not completely worked out yet. Like I said, that program stalled through COVID. It's been seeded with part of our room tax budget, but seeded so that we're using this, the seeded funds to kick off grant and um, sponsor funding for it. Next slide, please. So the uh, Visit Sheboygan structure, and I just wanna review for everyone in case you're not aware, Visit Sheboygan is a 501c6 nonprofit tourism entity as defined by the state of Wisconsin. It was created under the Wisconsin Room Tax Statute um, and it's overseen by a board of directors. Um, of course, it, it manages tourism promotion and development for the Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone. The Sheboygan Area Tourism Zone includes the city of Sheboygan, the town of Sheboygan and the town of Wilson. So it's not, we're not countywide. Our main focus and where our funding comes from is room tax within that zone. Um, the, the room tax that comes to us is managed by the uh, Sheboygan Area Tourism Room Tax Commission. Next slide, please. So this is just the room tax cycle. I just wanted everyone to understand how it works. 
Obviously, visitors come into the area. Those that spend a night in a lodging property, whether it's a hotel, Airbnb, um, motel, they pay an 8% room tax. Um, that 8% room tax is then collected by the hotel, which is then collected by each municipality in the zone. Each municipality, by state law, is um, welcome to keep 30% of that, and that can go to their general fund or however they want to spend it. 70% goes to the room tax commission, and the room tax commission forwards it back to us that uses it for tourism promotion and development under the state statute. And of course, that's to bring more people back into the zone to spend the night to keep perpetuating the income. So that's just the cycle of the room tax. Next slide, please. Okay, now I cannot read these numbers because they're very small on my screen. <laughs> Um, let's see, but I just want to, let me see if I can get them up here. This will give you an idea of the revenue from two, or actually the tourism economic performance from 2019 compared to 18. Give me just a second here. I'll run through it with you. Okay. So what this is telling us is it, it's basically the Wisconsin State Department of Tourism commissions a company called Tourism Economics um, who does economic data and economic studies for the tourism industry worldwide. Um, and what they do every year is look at certain sectors of the industry and the um, economic impact of them and report them compared to the year before. We don't get the years um, numbers until May of the following year. So we don't know 2020 yet. But if we compare 2018 to 2019, you can see that Sheboygan County, as far as visitor spending coming into the county um, goes, we are ranked number 15 in the state among 72 counties. And we pull in about $243 million a year in visitor spending. About $410 million um, is is also brought into the county through business to business <coughs> sales, direct business to business sales. Um, tourism is also responsible for about 3,685 jobs that were shown in 2019. Of course, total labor income is 92.7 million. And in 2019, tourism <coughs> contributed 30.2 million to state and local coffers. Of course, we do expect these numbers to drop for the first time since 2009 during the recession due to COVID in 2020. Um, what this slide shows us is where we rank along the rank shore, since that's our real competitive area. Um, Sheboygan County ranks number four along the lake shore, um, actually only behind Milwaukee, Brown County, Door County, and Racine. And that's with the 243 million in visitor spending. Um, and I'm sorry, Meredith, I probably didn't tell you to switch that slide. So hold on a second, because I'm looking at mine. And that's a like short. Yeah, so we'll switch slides again. Okay, what we're looking at here is the history of room tax collections um, in our tourism zone. And we're starting out at 2010. That's when the tourism office first opened as a tourism office embedded in the chamber. That's when I started um, heading that office. And you can see how it's expanded <coughs> through 2020. Um, now there's a real, there's a big jump from um, 18 to 19 and I'll explain that in a minute. But it, tourism has been growing every year in our tourism zone and throughout the county. Um, but you can see where we took a big dip in COVID. We were in 2019 at about 1 .2, over 1.2 million in our budget. And in 2020, we've dropped to uh, 876,000. Next slide, please. So the Blue Harbor Conference Center um, is basically where the extra income is coming from. The conference center was built based on an agreement for bond funding. And for years, 100% of Blue Harbor's room tax was used to pay those bonds. Well, the bonds matured in 2018. Um, but over that period of time that the bonds needed to be paid back, the Blue Harbor room tax fell short about 749,000. 
the city of Sheboygan made that up for them because the bond needed to be paid. Um, so the city covered it, but when the um, room tax laws changed in 2017, Visit Sheboygan was incorporated due to changes made in the state statute. So Visit Sheboygan did agree that the city should be made whole again and um, did agree to a, a repayment schedule to pay back what Blue Harbor had fell short on the bond agreement with the city. That agreement was originally set on annual payments that started in 2019 and carried through 2025. Next slide, please. So through COVID, we had a real challenging year. We had a bunch of brand new expenses just to start. Income unexpectedly started to drop pretty drastically for what we were taking on, um, including a new visitor center, a new building with new operational costs, a retail outlet. Um, of course, we had to do build out um, by about $88,000 in furniture and decor, um, another few thousand, a couple 10,000 in exhibit um, signage. We had a staff expansion to run it because um, we had to have, we still had to continue our regular jobs and run the visitor center. Um, and then continue uh, building up our marketing and promotion so that we could continue future revenue growth as we have in the past. Um, in 2021, you'll notice we just have a sign on the building, but we have another huge expenditure coming with a monument sign out on the street. We put that off just to see what's gonna happen um, with the pandemic situation and revenue. Um, and then of course the Visit Sheboygan STEAM project is right now basically stalled. Um, we did find that through COVID, a lot of the grant program stalled. And of course we, we couldn't find, a, a there wasn't a lot of suppliers that we could even have come in and help us build that up. So we're just rebuilding that again. That one will probably be about 24 months behind in opening by the time we're done catching up with it. Um, and then we had some contractual advertising obligations that we were able to negotiate halted in 2020 due to COVID that we pushed out when we knew people were traveling safe or it was safer to travel. It wasn't worth telling people to come here during a lockdown um, when they were afraid to travel. Next slide, please. So tonight what we're asking for, what we spoke to the finance committee about was with the uh, Blue Harbor bond debt, um, we did make the first payment in 2019, which was the first year we were contracted to make it once the Blue Harbor room tax started coming into our budget. Um, but due to the impact of obviously COVID and our financial setbacks and room tax income, we were requesting deferment of the 2020 payment. Um, we were also requesting at the time deferment of the 2021 payment, however, Going into our pro forma budget, we do have that in the budget for 2021. But we're so we're asking that if without knowing what's going to happen in the future with vaccine distribution or the next big mutation that's worse than what's happened now, God forbid. Um, right now, if everything goes as planned, we will be able to make the 21 payment. But what we're asking is that we can revisit that in December and just look at how the year went and see if we should negotiate that payment down or if we're able to make it as planned in the original schedule. So that's the end of the slideshow. I'm going to shut my PowerPoint here. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to help with that. We'll be discussing this a little bit later in the agenda, but there are any general questions from anyone? I have a general question there. This is Alderman Bourne. Please go ahead. Amy, I noticed in your presentation that you pay rent on the new building. Uh, who owns the building? Um, actually, Wild Legal LLC owns the building. It's Leslie Kohler's private um, development company for that project. Thank you. I have a question, Mike. Please go ahead, all the persons. Hey, Amy, I just I was looking at your PowerPoint, and there was a, a bullet point in one of your checklists that you were expanding staff this year. I'm just a little curious about were you expanding staff? Was that put on hold, or was that um, part of the plan? Even though you guys knew you weren't going to be able to to make the payments this year. Well, fortunately, at the time, what, what the only thing we've expanded is the visitor center staff. We were going to expand the steam staff. Okay. Um, we did hire someone to do that who was only on a month before the shutdown. 
and then we could see that project wasn't going to happen a, a few months later. So that person went on furlough for a while and then was laid off, unfortunately. Okay. Because as we saw what was happening with the income, there was no way to continue that project and probably won't start again until 2022. Um, but we did bring on people to man the visitor center and the retail space. Um, so those weren't significant salaries. All the marketing and advertising staff has, was already there and had been there for years. So right now we are looking at um, two hourly positions to run the visitor center for the public and run the retail operation. Any other comments? Well, Amy, thank you very much for that presentation. I appreciate it. Sure, thank you. Next, we'll go on with mayor's announcements. Uh, to start out with, I have a proclamation to present, and I'd like to call up uh, Denise Whitstock from Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County, Krista Singh from Boys and Girls Clubs, and uh, Shar Pakniak from Horizon for Girls is joining us remotely. A proclamation, whereas January is National Mentoring Month, celebrating the benefits of youth mentoring across the country and locally, we recognize Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Sheboygan County, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Sheboygan County, and Horizon for Girls and other organizations for their youth mentoring efforts. And whereas every day in Sheboygan and communities across the country, caring adults volunteer their time with mentoring programs to concrete, create consistent supportive relationships with young people. At its most basic level, mentoring is successful in real life because it guarantees that young people have an adult to turn to and that they have a guiding hand to help them in dealing with day-to-day -day challenges. At more a complex level, there is a powerful mentoring effect that ultimately uh, makes our communities stronger. And whereas quality mentoring programs are proven to build relationships that help to improve school attendance, academic achievement, and to promote responsible decision making, and also provide skills to better navigate relationships at school, socially, and at home. And whereas a report by Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership, found that young adults who were at risk for not completing high school but had a mentor were 55% more likely to be enrolled in college than those who did not have a mentor, 81% more likely to report participating regularly in sports or extracurricular activities, and more than twice as likely to say that they held a leadership position in a club or sports team, and 78% more likely to volunteer regularly in their communities. Whereas mentoring programs have shown to be effective in combating school violence, discipline problems, substance abuse, and incarceration and truancy, now therefore I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby declare January of 2021 National Mentoring Month in Sheboygan and call upon public officials, businesses, and community leaders and educators and encourage all residents of Sheboygan to observe this month with appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs in order to recognize the men and women who serve as staff and volunteers at local mentoring programs and who help young people find inner strength to reach their full potential. And uh, with a great deal of pride, I'm presenting these proclamations to both of these organizations. And we'll give charge to her later, but I'd like to ask them to come up and tell us just a little bit about their program and what's happening in their mentoring program, especially how they're responding to COVID. Denise? Could, we're having technical issues too. Folks on the other end of the meeting can't hear. Scott, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> the chat was lighting up, so I thought he'd say something. Let me know when we're ready, Scott. us now. Can you guys hear us?
Please enter your access code followed by the pound or... To enable audio controls, please enter your... Can you guys hear us? All right, we're getting thumbs up. So I don't think we're good. <laughs> Denise, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen and everyone um, for this honor. We're very excited to celebrate National Mentoring Month. I thought I'd take just a few brief moments to share a little bit about Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, I think everyone probably knows this, the traditional model of what we do, which is the concept of pairing an at-risk quote-unquote youth with a caring adult. Um, but what some people don't realize is that for over 100 years, this organization has been so, really fulfilling that sole mission in over 15 countries in the world and every 50 state here in the United States. Um, Sheboygan County is the oldest in the state of Wisconsin, and we've served over 22,000 youth in our time here since 1965. And I wanted to respond to your comment about how we've transitioned during COVID just a little bit. Um, we're in the human relationship business, and so we took a pause to move our staff to work remotely. But after that, we didn't really have much of a pause. We inserted some technology into our programs, but otherwise we've been keeping uh, bigs and littles and families closer than ever uh, because this is a time of crisis for families that are facing a lot of struggles during normal times. And we've continued to make matches. We've continued to transition programs in our schools to make sure that kids are staying connected and safe, um, having that technology to reach out and uh, feel supported when they've lost their single social, often single social system, which is their school. Um, and one of the things that we're really excited about uh, is some of the firsts that we've experienced this year. Um, we have officially, th in, in this council, we've uh, experienced our first official contract of partnership of, I don't know, are we dating now? Is that what we say? Or no? <laughs> uh, between the Sheboygan Police Department and Big Brothers Big Sisters to officially bring an, a, a formal program of Bigs with Badges to the community. Um, Chief Demogowski has been wonderful in helping spearhead that initiative and spreading it throughout the county to engage law enforcement with uh, youth that uh, potentially might have a preconceived notion about what law enforcement is or isn't in our community. Uh, we're excited to be looking at a five-year pilot starting this fall with the Sheboygan Area School District with technology-enhanced mentoring and, and the high school setting, focusing on academic and career preparedness. And um, if there's one thing we've learned in the last 12 months, it's that human connection is really vital for kids particularly. Our professional degreed staff work with families sometimes up to 13 years. And so we get to know families and kids very, very well. Um, and we have become a very trusted partner for over 800 people in this community. We've helped bigs that never thought they would have to navigate the social sector and apply for food, uh, food services. We've helped families navigate how to pay for a family member's burial expense uh, because they were visiting from another country. And we've had kids, five and six year old kids, build relationships with really cool adults on a tablet for the first time ever. So we've had some really cool experiences and it's really kept our staff moving forward and knowing that even when our days are very, very long, the work that we're doing is worthwhile. So. For those of you in the room that have participated with us and shared your time, we appreciate it. Um, Captain Cobb, Todd, an amazing chef, if you didn't know that, Administrator Wolf. Um, Chad, Chief, thank you, and we're excited to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, Christina from Boys and Girls Club. All right, we good on the sound? Uh, so I'm Christina Singh. I lead the Boys and Girls Clubs here in Sheboygan County. And uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs provides kids ages 6 to 18 with equitable opportunities, safe spaces, and vital resources. 
This past year, that looked a little bit like delivering meals and grocery store gift cards to address food insecurity. It looked like developing virtual programming options, uh, getting thousands of activity kits out to kids who needed them, um, expanding our teen program hours, and also opening a program for 10 hours a day when school switched to virtual learning so that we could support kids who didn't have internet access or a positive home environment. On top of innovating our services, we also opened a new location at Jefferson Elementary for before and after school programming. And every step of the way, we prioritize the physical and emotional safety of our youth. So regardless of the circumstances, our club delivers outcome-based uh, programming in three uh, core areas, and that's academic success, healthy lifestyles, and good character and citizenship. For every kid, the formula for success looks a little bit different, and that's why our staff are trained to build positive mentoring relationships with the kids. It's an important ingredient for everything we do, and it really enables kids to uh, improve their outcomes in our three core program areas. So uh, Mayor Vandersteen mentioned some statistics about kids being 55% uh, more likely uh, to enroll in college if they regularly meet with a mentor, 78% uh, more likely to regularly volunteer, and 130% more likely to uh, pursue leadership type positions um, if, if, they're, if they have a mentor. So uh, statistics and numbers aside, um, our staff are sometimes the only uh, positive adult relationship that, uh, that youth have. And so they're often the first to notice abuse or neglect, um, the first to hear about a big problem or challenge at home, um, the first to celebrate uh, a teen's new job. Um, so we, we form those relationships with our youth um, in order to help them succeed, and it's really uh, at the core of what Boys and Girls Club programming is all about. Um, so for, uh, for all you mentors out there, uh, you are champions of youth, and, and I thank you. I'm grateful uh, to Mayor Vandersteen and to all of those who support programs like ours um, and all of those who uh, either work in a mentoring capacity or volunteer uh, to men mentor youth. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Christina. Uh, Shar Pakniak, are you there? Well, we also thank uh, all the work that uh, Shar does with Horizon for Girls. So let's give these girls a big hand for all the efforts that they put forth in their organization. And we also remember all their boards that helped them to, to manage things and then all the volunteers who volunteer in the community. So thank you very much. Next, I'd like to bring up um, Paula Halefrich. Paula, please come forward. Paula is retiring this, this week. And then Paula began her employment with the police department on March 16th of 1987 on the third shift as a clerk typist. She had applied for this position after seeing an ad in the Sheboygan Press classified section and is grateful that Chief Keitel and the city took a chance on her. She was promoted in 1991 to department secretary, and in 2006 to administrative assistant to the chief. On January 1st of 2008, she assumed the additional duties of office supervisor. Paula not only serves as the administrative assistant to the chief, but also coordinates all of the administrative functions for the department, directly supervising 12 employees, helps to pay the bills, order supplies, administer records management software, manage the budget. During her tenure with the city, she's demonstrated an impressive work ethic and has been extremely dependable for the department. Chief Domogulski told me that he is going to miss Paula greatly. She has been a great leader, he said, and resource and a sounding board for him. She is extremely organized and efficient and has been an unbelievable sense of when to step in and help and when to stand back. 
He is very grateful for the integrity, competence, leadership, and ability and professionalism that Paula has demonstrated each day during the last 11 years that he's worked with her and the 23 prior to that. He is very proud of her ability to accept change and the growth that is demonstrated over her career. We appreciate the care, gratitude, and kindness that she's shown to department employees and appreciate the loyalty and respect and concern that she has demonstrated for the city. Paula has shared how she was then so proud to work for the city, how much she will miss working with everyone in the city, but has decided time has come to focus on her personal life and spend more time with her family. Paula's last day with the city is tomorrow, January 5th. Paula, on behalf of the city, we're very thankful for the 34 years of service and the positive contributions that you've made to the police department in the city of Sheboygan. Please accept our best wishes in your retirement. And I'd like to present this certificate of appreciation to Paula Halefresh for uh, 34 years of dedicated service from March 16th, 1987 through January 5th of 2021. Thank you so much, Paula, and have a great retirement. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call up Russ Schreiner. Russ began his employment with the city of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Police Department in August of 1993. And without a doubt, he is one of the best hires that the city's ever made. Russ's last day will be with the city will be this Friday, January 8th of 2021. His accomplishments as the communication and electronics technician for the department, city, and county are too numerous to list, but rest assured every major communications and data project in the city and the county for the last 27 years has been led by Russ. The first mobile data system, the citywide wireless mesh system, the new police and fire stations, countywide digital radio system, the combined dispatch center, and the voice over internet protocol phone system, and the list goes on. If that's not enough, Russell has also held leadership positions on county and state committees and looked uh, on any project that, that need, needed his help without a complaint. Well, with, well, without too much of a complaint. He has served as the police department's own MacGyver. There's nothing that he couldn't fix with a nail cutter, a toothpick, and a Band-Aid. Russ is truly uh, the guy who could do it all, even serving as the department bugler for a while. Wow. His dedication and commitment to the city and incredible work ethic was noticed by all. He has been twice selected as the police department's civilian employee of the year and was also recognized with the citizen awards by the sheriff's department. He's easygoing, kind, and caring personality in combination with a healthy sense of humor has endeared him to all of us. Chief Domagowski mentioned that he is grateful for all the technical advice and counsel that Russ has provided over the years. His knowledge and skill have been invaluable to the department. His ability to learn and keep us current and ahead of the curve in communications field and as technology has continued to advance. Russ has always had the safety of our personnel as main uh, priority and has left an amazing legacy in the city of Sheboygan. Russ has shared that he's grateful to have the opportunity to work for the city and county in Sheboygan and to have the opportunity to work with all the city employees. He asked that I share his gratitude and respect for the city's employees and the work that they do, and he's grateful for the support that he's been given. Lastly, he wants all of you to know the importance of the work done by the city and the police department that motivates him to come to work every day and do what he can to help make their jobs easier. Russ, on behalf of the city, we're thankful for your 27 years of service and your positive conscience that you've made to the police department and the city of Sheboygan. Please accept our best wishes for a happy retirement. And I'd like to present this certificate of appreciation to Russell Schneider. The certificate of appreciation is in recognition of your 27 years of dedicated service from August 30th of 1993 through January 8th of 2021. Congratulations, Russ. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You want to say a few words? <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, one uh, one thing one does when you come to retirement age is kind of reflect back on, on time. I happened to go through a few pictures in my office and 
found uh, that I really did have dark hair when I started this job. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I, I have to admit, I, I don't think it was from the stress of the job, um, but I spent 23 years in the basement of City Hall, and we had no windows down there, so I think really that was what happened. <laughs> Uh, but really, I, I want to thank uh, uh, you, Mr. Mayor, and all the past mayors and city administration um, and the, all the department heads in the city and county that I, that I was able to work with and work for, uh, Chief Domogowski and Chief Montanano and the past chiefs that I worked under, um, and you know all the other department heads fire chiefs, uh, other police chiefs in the county, certainly uh, the employees that I, and coworkers that I work with, uh, they, they really made me a better person and, uh, and helped me to succeed. Um, and I wanna thank my immediate supervisor, also Captain Cobb, and all my past supervisors, and it's been a, 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 good, a good run, I, and I thank you. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank another very important person in my life, and that would be my wife, Martha, and my family for their support, especially on those nights when something would go wrong and we'd have to come in and, uh, and take care of some critical system. But again, thank you very much, and uh, I'll, just, I'll just leave this going forward. Uh, I plan to, if I wanna use a few technical terms, I'm gonna, uh, spend a little more higher frequency uh, having fun and relaxation, but I will stay in tune with all my, my associates and, and coworkers. So thank you very much, appreciate it. Russ, I wanna know who's gonna be the blue Santa next year. Are you gonna come, still come back for that? <laughs> I, I'll, always, uh, I'll always let that open. Uh. All right, that's great. <laughs> thank you much, Russ. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, next, let's move on to a COVID-19 update and review the numbers for January 4th. Uh, our positive cases count went up 303, and that's down quite a bit from the last couple of weeks. The active cases are at 848, which is down 222 uh, from last week. The recovered cases have increased 532, and I stand at 10,541. Currently, there's 21 people hospitalized that went up three from last week, and the death toll has gone up two more from 92 to 94. Uh, total negative tests are up to 40,581. They were up 582 during the last week. The trajectory of the numbers since November was where it was down 40%, and we've been pretty consistent since then, but our activity level is still very high. We've come off the critically high, but we're still at very high. The efforts of so many at this time has reduced the strain on hospital admissions, we are only three days past New Year's, and in the coming weeks, we'll see how the year-end holidays affected our future test results. Please continue to wear a mask, wash and sanitize your hands often, and maintain social distance, and try to avoid groups of people that are not in your family. These actions, if followed, will prevent the spike of coronavirus during the next few weeks. The Wisconsin Guard testing continues uh, to offer testing on both Wednesdays and Fridays at the Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center in Sheboygan Falls. If you're going to go in for a test, please sign up in advance at the state website, covidconnectwi.gov. Uh, the next step is uh, the vaccine distribution. A vaccine is a very small part of, uh, harm, harmless part of a pathogen like COVID-19, teaches your body how to respond before you come into, into contact with the real virus in real life. The vaccine will likely cause you to have a sore arm and potentially a fever. That's a normal part of getting vaccinated. It will take months to reach uh, community immunity, and we must continue to stay at home, wear a mask, and physically distance and practice good hy hygiene while this vaccination goes on. 
Uh, you will need two doses of the vaccine to have full protection. Ask your vaccinator when you, uh, when you need to come back for your second dose before you leave the vaccination clinic. The first groups uh, that are receiving vaccine are frontline healthcare workers who are providing direct care to COVID-19 patients and people living and working in long-term care facilities. The next group to receive the vaccine will be essential workers, then vulnerable populations, and then the general population. If you have health conditions that put you at a greater risk for COVID-19 complications, please contact your health care provider, and they will work with you to get scheduled for a vaccine when it's available for you. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 .2 and 2.3. Alderperson Sorensen. Thanks, Mary. Move to receive all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Is it, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the items that are on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Next is reports of officers. Item 3.1 is RO number 119 of 2021 by the city clerk submitting communication from the Sheboygan County Register of Deeds certifying that the Stonebrook Crossing Edition number one has been recorded as directed by uh, 236 colon 36 Wisconsin statutes. All the person Sorensen. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.1 is resolution number 140 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Sfaglio and Decker establishing a temporary polling location for the February 16th of 2021 and April 6th of 2021 elections for wards 16, 17, and 18 in wards 15, 20, and 21 in the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to say a few words first before I make a motion. Um, I know that there's been a lot of discussion and we've had this item back and forth just in terms of moving and solidifying the polling locations and we always have to do them within um, a certain amount of days to notify the registered voters. Um, and I know we have uh, some elections coming up and I appreciate Meredith and her staff working on that. Um, so just for with providing that context, that's why we're going to be suspending the rules. So I'll ask for a suspension of the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion, motion and support. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.2 through 4.4 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 219 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 136 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Donahue, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the first amendment to the agreement between the City of Sheboygan, Visit Sheboygan Inc. and the Sheboygan Area Room Tax Commission regarding reimbursement of expenditures made by the City of Sheboygan related to the Blue Harbor Resort and Conference Center. It recommends adopting the resolution and the first amendment to the agreement with amendments. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you. I move to uh, receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution and First Amendment to agreement with amendments. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? I guess I have a quick, just a quick question. Um, maybe this is for the chair of the committee. I know that this this item we it was proposed to suspend the rules last time, but we decided to refer back to the committee. Just was curious if if there was an affirmative vote or what the general sense of the committee was um, for coming back to council. Other person, Donahue. You know, I, I have some trouble hearing you, Alder Sorensen. Sorry. What was the exact question? Um, I, I, so my, my statement was that I know that this item, we it was proposed at the last council meeting to suspend the rules and approve, but instead we made the recommendation to refer it back to the Finance Committee. Um, I was just curious what the general sense from the committee was um, on this item and if there, if there was um, any feedback or any other point of discussion that should be raised with other Alders. Oh, um, and thank you for that question. Um, we actually had a very good discussion, uh, and I appreciate Amy Wilson coming before the committee, and I think her PowerPoint presentation today provided even further information regarding the nature of this obligation between the city and the visit, and visit Sheboygan with respect to the Blue Harbor uh, bonds. Um, so uh, uh, after a uh, lively discussion, uh, we determined that it certainly makes sense to suspend the 2020 payment and to revisit the 2021 payment um, uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, <clears throat> as Amy pointed out, um, the payment is uh, in the but in their in the visit Sheboygan's budget, um, but depending on uh, recovery uh, of tourism and so forth, it may be possible for us to uh, receive the full payment or partial payment or uh, to uh, uh, suspend the payment uh, for another year. This of course just extends the term of the contract so that the city is uh, uh, finally reimbursed and, and made whole. Thank you for those comments. Mayor. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I agree with uh, Alder Person Donahue's explanation, and I'm very comfortable uh, after Amy came into the committee and explained everything to us. Uh, but I was also happy to see that Visit Sheboygan has already budgeted the uh, 2021 payment. So that's encouraging, but uh, uh, we, will, we will be reviewing it uh, at our, probably our first meeting in, uh, in December to see if it's still practical, practical to go ahead with that. But I'm very comfortable in uh, delaying the uh, 2020, pay, uh, 2020 payment because of uh, the reasons for it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 220 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 138 of 2021 by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2021 budget. All the person Donahue. Older person Donahue? She's her mic's muted. You're muted. I move that we receive the report of our committee and adopt the resolution. My apologies. Thank you. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? See, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Aye. Oh, sorry. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under other matters authorized by law, city attorney. There's one other matter, 7.1, which is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2021 and June 30, 2022. That'll be referred to licensing hearings in the public safety committee. All the person Sorensen.
Is there a second? second? All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <coughs>